you know, we sat with them and taught them how to use it because we didn't want them just to, you know, be thrown into a room and not actually know how to use something like this. They found that it was something that they really enjoyed and that it was uh, something that improved their sense of comfort. Uh, the, the next part of it, which is whether it, it impacted length of stay and uh, the average length of stay in the hospital is something that we couldn't actually figure out from this, this study because it's just two rooms versus two controls and the confounding factors with the patients who were in those rooms were something that we couldn't parse. We, need, we would need to have a much larger study in order to do that. Um, <clears throat> We also looked at um, well-being from the sense of whether we could parse from what they said in the surveys that we took and what they said to us um, and what we wrote down, whether there was a sense of them feeling like this is something that, like a positive improvement on their environment. And um, we added it at a later stage with the adolescents who were actually able to speak to us about what these were, um, these, um, what the SAGE class was doing for them. And it suggests, from our linguistic analysis, it suggests that we, we were doing a good job and that we should try to do it for a larger set of rooms. In terms of energy, we found that uh, this is, the study was inconclusive. Um, <clears throat> it is possible that sage glass or any other type of dynamic kill tinting situation can improve energy use in the hospital, but the hospital has a much larger energy budget uh, for a lot of other things and just a small change in, in lighting or heat in a particular room was not enough uh, to justify the cost. Um, what we would need to do is to try to figure out if there were rooms that needed it more than others uh, and if it's, it could justify the cost in particular places as opposed to a wholesale improvement uh, or installation across the hospital. All right, so. Uh, this is basically a, a picture of one of the rooms that we had with the glazing installed. Um, we think that this is something that we need to explore further, and Sage Glass has agreed to work with us and do, um, you know, in, in the next two wings that are being built, which are on the 11th and 12th floor of the South Tower of Children's Hospital, we are going to actually have a much larger study for this. The next thing that we were looking at was circadian lighting. Right, so the hospital has actually installed circadian um, supported lighting in a number of wings and what we wanted to do was take a look at whether this was something that was improving sleep quality, sleep quantity, um, and overall um, sense of well-being and health among the patient population. Um, there are a lot, a lot, and a lot of uncertainties associated with sleep studies, particularly in this type of population. We don't necessarily have enough data about how this is how this can be studied, but there are a lot of studies that there are, there is a lot of research that is just emerging, and so this is the work that we have to do in order to figure out whether this is something that needs to be done across the board, across the hospital. But the major complications that we faced when we tried to do this in the rooms that we had, and which were many, was that we, we found a lot of really great data supporting circadian supported lighting in the hospital among the unit, among particular um, particular groups of patients, but not on others. So we can't, we were not able to do this for babies, and we were not able to do this for our um, behavioral patients. So the ones who uh, uh, are in there for psychiatric treatment. Uh, this is because our our testing was to use a Fitbit. So we gave Fitbits to our, you know, the patients, and we tracked their sleep through that, and then we measured it against whether, you know, the lighting was in that room or not. What we found was you can't, well, you cannot do that for babies. You can't put a Fitbit on a baby. Um, and for the behavioral patients, we cannot give them something that they can take off and eat, or throw at someone, or destroy, or use in a in a way that. <coughs> so we don't know how to do that part of the study. But we also know that those are the two populations that we really would like to know whether we're improving their sleep quality. Um, so this is something that we need more help with figuring out. And you know, there are those of you who are doing you know, sensor work with you know, non-intrusive ways of seeing how people are sleeping. And we need to do that. We need to figure that out. And we need to figure it out for, for, for patients who are not necessarily healthy you know, or healthy sleepers. Um, 
and know what that might, might look like for an unhealthy sleeper uh, to, to be able to get more sleep. So this is my, my team. Um, most of them are from the Children's Hospital. Uh, many of the interns are actually from Drexel. And this is something that's ongoing. So if anyone wants to do any studies in hospitals, I, you know, <laughs> I, I would love to have some help. And um, these are the people who worked on it. Uh, 